time capsules are fascinating but it's only fascinating for those that actually find them not for the one who actually makes them because they know it's there no one else knows it's there and the question is when is that time capsule gonna be built up well turns out Dr. Stone really pulled one number of him here part of me questions though is this logic though I mean it it's 2000 years shouldn't that have been broken by into dust by this point but hey it's fiction I do not complain about that Dr. Stone chapter 5, 59 the anger enemy fan here to bring you it as uh, they finished up the last things as well as creating a mic using mobile seaweed uh, they managed to create some crystals that are actually Rochelle's salts with that uh, they have officially created their cell phone However, then suddenly, Kuaku asks a question that I think have been vexing me a little bit. Is that, uh, that the phone is now here, and now they can communicate. But the thing is, though, can they really communicate with each other at long distance? It's then Senku says, oh crap, we need another one of these. So having just one cell phone was completely useless. Not to mention that cell phone is incredibly large. It's not even small, handy one to do that. So yeah, again, yes, says you did that on purpose, didn't you? Because you know their spells would have been broken if they were to make one another. So Senku decides to do a different plan, saying something like, "Although we may not have another cell phone to receive the signals, if we extend a cable, we should be able to connect to a landline telephone." So they connected to Ruri's house as well as uh, the kingdom's science place. As um, they should test it out, uh, Ginro pulls uh, a mocking joke on Chrome saying like uh, this is li Ruri is listening on the other end so now tells the truth feelings. Of course everyone thinks that means that uh, he will confess to her but of course he doesn't do that. He instead just says that science is very crazy isn't it? Of course everyone feels like it's that. But indeed, the voice actually travels all across uh, the, the speaker, and the telephone is a success. And of course, everyone is baffled, but no one gets more baffled than Senku, and suddenly, so when Magma asks, uh, how can something so small talk, uh, uh, Ruri says, it's just like a speaker. And how do you know it's just like a speaker? And then the kids begin to mention a bee. And it turns out that the speaker is actually meant from a, from another story of the Hundred Year Story, the story number thirteen, something out long, long ago. There was a name B named Speaker that loved to talk, and uh, and when the speaker stuck its needle and uh, stinger onto a gravestone, the voice of the dead would be able to speak to him, which is actually not based on any other different story. But it does mention on how the speaky speaker works, how the bee works, and, uh, and also the gravestone of someone deceased. Gen and uh, Senku is immediately realizing that all the other stories of 100 years was to pass down wisdom, meaningful wisdom. But this one doesn't have one exactly that one. It's very fishy. Especially the only word there is the speaker, and as well as... Uh, Tombstone. So again, he says that uh, uh, it's number 14, which in Japanese can be read as Ishi. And Ishi is also another word for Ishigami. No, not Ishi, not another word. Ishigami is Senku's last name. And Ishi can also mean rock. So, uh, uh, and uh, so what does all this mean? Well, it turns out that the, the, what the 14th story is actually a, a clue story it doesn't make sense because it's meant to be hidden paths on on Senku's father's gravestone exists something the story says about a bee and a speaker to okay, getting on a gravestone and then talking to the dead it means that on this gravestone which is his father's which of course many other things that Senku will be cursed if he does that, mean that um, uh, uh, the speaker which now Senku has invented is capable of uh, speaking to the dead 
through a special invention. Well, not now I just said it by confusing yourself. Not speaking to the dead, but words that are uh, words recorded a very long time ago. Because the gravestone that held uh, Senku's father is not a gravestone. It's a time capsule, as I said in the beginning. So, uh, with help of Kuwako, who is more delicate than magma, they crack open the shells, revealing a silver line that, uh, as soon as Senku washes it away with a little hydrochloric acid, it's revealed it's a glass, a very round disc with a hole in it. And, uh, disc, uh, this is a disc. The story mentioned a speaker. And speaking with a needle, there is a hole in this disc. And speaking with a needle, the bee was getting into the speaker and then could talk to the dead. This disc here is none other than a record using a special device. They will be able to listen to the recordings that the founders of Ishigami village recorded before the modern technology disappeared. That was the true story. No, that was the truth about story number one, number 14. It was to give Senku a clue on how to find the disc and how to use it as well. Because what is recorded on there, no idea. But uh, it's very likely knowledge. I mean, Senku is knowledgeable. He knows probably everything uh, everything else about science, but these are words recorded thousands of years ago. Perhaps it's their father, perhaps it's Senku's father telling what he has been doing, or perhaps giving a clue on how they can find new ways to revive society. I mean, he did say that only Senku could do it. But whatever this disc is, it has to be something to help them on the way. They have acquired this, this telephone now, but again, it's not exactly effective yet. Is it possible, though, that if they were able to listen to this disc, and if it works, again, it's supposed to be 3,000 years old. I highly doubt it still works. But if it does work, I won't complain about that. My point is, what is recorded there that can be useful? Or is it just a father telling his son, and then an adopted father telling his adopted son how much he loved him? Well, you know. Who knows? Interesting though, I didn't think Dr. Stone would go down this route with a time capsule and all that stuff. So I'm already looking forward to more. You give me a pulse if you have any.